Hey folks, welcome to our exotic garden here on the north end of Salt Spring Island. It is the, is it the 18th already? I think it's the 18th of, uh, of, of April. And uh, what you're looking at here is a Dicksonia Antarctica, our Tasmanian tree fern. So this is last year's fronds. The croziers are just starting to emerge now, the knuckles, out of the center of the crown of this uh, Tasmanian tree fern, Dicksonia Antarctica. And uh, a lot of you people would like to grow this plant. And uh, there's a trick to growing this plant. The key is not to let the center of this tree fern freeze. The most tender part of this fern is the center crown where the croziers emerge. That's where the fronds come out and unfurl. So this, this uh, plant here gets no protection on the uh, fronds. The fronds, as you see here, are like that right through the wintertime green. It does stay evergreen here year round. But what I do is I put burlap, fold it up and put it on the inner crown. And I also put bubble plastic over top of that. And then I take an upside down plant tray and I flip that over top of it and I put a piece of wood over it just so nothing blows out. If we do get some wind, it doesn't blow the bubble plastic out or the, um, or the uh, burlap. I'll grab the camera in a minute and I'll show you what I mean. So uh, you can spend a lot of money on these things and you can get a really bad winter in a cooler zone. And if it freezes in the inner crown, I don't care if your tree fern has 10 feet of trunk on it, it will die. So uh, the most tender part of the tree fern is the inner crown. The second most cold hardy part are the fronds. These will brown at around temperatures just below 20 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 6.6 .6, and the trunk is probably hardy to about minus 9 degrees Celsius or minus 10 degrees Celsius but the inner crown does not like a lot of heavy frost. So this, uh, this plant here will unfurl two dozen new fronds at a time and they're just starting to show now the knuckles a little later this year for some reason. Last year they were already coming out in March but this year they're a little later and when they come out, they will be about eight foot in length. And it puts on a quite the, uh, quite the amazing show. So what I do at the end of summer, these older fronds from last year will start to brown and I clip them off and then just leave the new flush of fronds. So uh, and this is Trachycarpus fortunae growing beside it. We have a lot of those in the garden. So this is growing in an alcove where it receives full sun, hot sun, and it doesn't bother it at this latitude. We're at 48 degrees north latitude. So. We'll go up into here, there's the trunk, it's got six feet of trunk on it. And what I'm talking about is here, you can see them coming out there. The knuckles are showing. That's where you want to protect on a tree fern, right in there. So lots of burlap, you could put straw on there, cover it up with plastic too over top of that, even if you keep it drier, that's a good thing. But don't let that get heavily frosted or frozen. That's, uh, that's a real problem, it's frozen. So a little bit of frost won't hurt it, but a, a killer freeze will definitely hurt it. I've seen big ones out in the Fraser Valley, southeast of Vancouver, freeze, and they had eight feet of trunk on them, just because the people that bought them did not know how to look after them. So, And you water it from the top, too. This whole trunk is made up of roots, so you water the tree fern from the top, and we water this religiously in the summer months every day. So I planted that in April 1994. So it's been there 24 years now, and it does really fine in this climate. There's some really nice tree ferns on Salt Spring Island. Nursery down the road from us sells a lot of them. This one was actually imported directly from Tasmania in September 1991. All right, try one in your own garden, folks, if you live in a similar growing zone. Thanks for watching.